Hi everyone. Welcome to Vidyalakshmi School YouTube channel. This is Naresh Reddy, Chemistry Faculty of Vidyalakshmi CVSE School. Okay. Now, today's let us discuss about one of the most important topic of J and NAIT. Our topic is colligative properties of plus 2 solution chapter. Okay. So, here in this session what we are going to discuss means what are colligator properties, how many properties are there, those properties depends on what and independent on what okay? and those properties are they related to the molar mass of solute or not. So, those concepts let us discuss in this session. Okay? So, shall we start? Yes, let us go to our topic. So, what is our topic means colligator properties. Okay. So, what are colligator properties means the properties of solution which depends on the number of solute particles but not on the nature of the solute are called colligator properties. Okay. So, in this definition is saying two important terms. What are those means? The properties of solution which depends on the number of the solute particles but not on the nature of the solute. Okay? So, what is the meaning of this means? For example, if I am taking NaCl as a solute, solute means in solution the substance which is present in a minor quantity is called solute and which is present in a larger quantity or excess quantity is called solvent. Okay? So, here if I am taking NaCl as a solute, then when it is dissolving in water or solvent, it dissociates to Na plus plus Cl minus. Let us take one mole of NaCl we are going to dissolve in water to prepare salt solution. Then that one mole of NaCl gives one mole of Na plus ion and one mole of Cl minus ion. So, that after dissolving in water that NaCl giving two moles of ions to the outside. Okay? Since one mole has 6.023 into 10 power 23 number of ions, here when one mole of NaCl dissolving in water, it finally gives 2 into 6.023 into 10 power 23 ions. Okay? So, here this total number of ions present in this are 2 into 6.023 into 10 power 23 ions are present there. 2 into 6.023 into 10 power 23 ions are present. Okay? And if you take glucose, if you take glucose. If you are dissolving this in water, then we can obtain glucose solution. That obtained mixture we are calling glucose solution. Okay. So, in this glucose solution, glucose is solute and water is solvent. Glucose is solute, water is solvent. Now, here if you see in this glucose solution, when we are dissolving this glucose in water, after dissolving, it does not dissociate into the ions. So, the actual formula of glucose is C6H12O6. The actual formula of glucose is C6H12O6. Okay. When it is dissolving in water, after that also it is giving same formula, it is not dissociating into ions. Okay? If you take one mole of glucose which is dissolving in water, after adding the same one mole of glucose molecules present in that, since it is not dissociating, the number of molecules does not increase. Okay? That means, so here one mole of glucose only obtaining here, that one contains 6.023 into 10 power 23 glucose molecules. But here 2 into 6 pan 0 to 3 10 power 23 ions are present. Means compared to here the number of molecules, here number of ions are 
double. Okay, so here if we measure the few properties of solution, what are those properties we will discuss later. Okay, if we measure the few properties of solution, thus or more value for this NaCl solution that is salt solution than this glucose solution because here number of molecules means number of particles less. So, here that particle is solute particle, glucose particle, glucose is solute here, okay. But here solute is NaCl that one dissociating gives more number of ions means more number of solute particles. So, the properties of a solution which depends only on the number of solute particles but not on the number of nature of the solute. Those properties we are calling as colligative properties. Okay. So, here this one shows more quantity in some properties and this one shows less quantity in some properties. Those properties we are calling colligative properties. Is it clear to you? Okay. But if you take this one is ionic compound and this one is covalent compound. This is ionic and this one is covalent. Okay. Depending on that nature ionic or covalent properties does not depend. That is properties do not depend on the nature of the solute whether it is ionic or covalent. Depending on that nature some properties of the solution do not depend. It depends only on the number of particles means number of ions or molecules coming after dissolving in solvent. Those properties we are calling as colligative properties. Okay? Clear? Right. Now let us see how many of those colligative properties are there. Okay? So if we say how many colligative properties are there, there are four colligative properties present. What are those means? Relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and osmotic pressure. These are the four colligative properties which depends only on number of the solute particles but not on the nature of solute. Okay? So, let us discuss one by one each. So, how many are colligative properties are there means four. Relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point, osmotic pressure. Okay? So, let us discuss the first one that is relative lowering of vapor pressure. So, before going to discuss relative lowering of vapor pressure, let us say once about the vapor pressure of a liquid solvent when we are going to dissolve non-volatile solute. Okay? So, here I told to you non-volatile solute and liquid solvent. Okay. So, let us say what is the meaning of that non-volatile solute and liquid solvent. Okay. So, if you take any sol liquid, if you take any liquid that liquid has some volatile nature. If you take any liquid like petrol, diesel, kerosene, water, chloroform, alcohol, okay. any liquid it has somewhat volatile nature means escaping of the liquid molecules from the liquid state into the vapors. That property is called volatile nature. Okay? So, here solvent I am taking as a liquid state. So, this is solvent, pure solvent I am taking. Pure solvent means I am not adding any solute to that liquid. Okay? Here liquid I am taking as a solvent and solute I am taking non-volatile solute. So, non-volatile solute means it does not undergo any vaporization means it does not show any volatile nature. For example, if you take stone, salt, glucose, okay, if you are keeping any of these substances in our uh, room or in our atmosphere, are those substances undergo any vaporization process on their on themselves? No, because they are non-volatile nature. Okay? So, here if any substance do not show the volatile character then that we are calling as non-volatile 
substrates. Such type of non-volatile solute I am adding to this pure solvent. Okay. So, when we are adding non-volatile solute to this pure solvent, then we can get a solution. We can get a solution because addition of solute to the solvent is called solution. Okay. So, this is a solution and this one is pure solvent. This is present in liquid state. This one also present in the liquid state. Okay. But in this liquid state, solute and solvent both are present. But on that, which one only show vaporization means only the solvent. Solute does not show any vaporization process because it is non-volatile nature. Okay. Now, if you see the volatile nature of these two after adding, that is the volatile nature of the liquid present in the pure state in the solution after adding non-volatile solute. Let us see what happened to that volatile nature. Okay. Now, see here carefully if you observe the volatile nature of any liquid mainly depends on the surface of that liquid. Okay. Below this part we are calling as bulk of that liquid, but this upper part we are calling surface. How many molecules are occupying on the surface depending on that the number of liquid molecules enter into the vapor state? Okay. So, that that volatile nature depends on surface molecule. Is it clear? So, here if more number of liquid molecules are occupying on the surface, then more number enter into the vapor state. Those vapors nothing but gas state so that they will exhibit some pressure. Okay. So, here in the case of pure solvent, since only solvent molecules are present, this surface is occupied only with the solvent molecules. Since we are not adding in this pure solvent solute, we are not adding any solute so that nothing solute particles occupy on the surface, only solvent particles there so that those solvent molecules are entered into the vapor state. Those vapors causes some pressure on the lid of this flask. That pressure is called vapor pressure. Okay. So, this is liquid state and this is vapor state okay. and these vapors produce some pressure, those we are calling vapor pressure. The pressure exerted by the vapors is called vapor pressure. Okay. Now, if we compare the same number of the solvent molecules on the surface in the solution state, if we compare that. Since here solute is adding to this solvent, some of the solute particles occupy on the surface and remaining enter into the bulk. Okay, because it is a homogeneous mixture. To say any mixture as a solution, that should be homogeneous. Means that entire mixture was distributed by the two components present in that solution. Okay, so here apart from the bulk some solute particles are occupying on the surface of the solution. Okay. So, here this blue color balls I am taking as a solvent molecules. Okay. And the green color balls I am taking as solute particles. So, that green color is solute and blue color solvent. Okay. Now, here if we compare the number of solvent molecules on the surface, if we see clearly. Here how many solvent molecules are there means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that 10 molecules are present on the surface. But in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 only present on the surface. When the number of solvent molecules are more on the surface then vaporization process more so that more number of vapor molecules present on the surface of this liquid. So, the pressure exerted by those vapors is also more. But here, since solvent molecules are less, those 5 molecules only now enter into the vapor state. When the 5 molecules enter into the vapor state, then those place occupied by the bulk liquid molecule. So, that bulk liquid molecule now enter onto the vapor. Okay, when bulk also enter onto the, so sorry, when bulk also enter onto the surface, again how many will occupy means? same 5 number. So, that remaining 5 molecules come to the 
oxide means onto the vapor state okay so here if we compare the number of vapor molecules in the pure solvent and solution state here vapor molecules are less but here vapor molecules are more okay so here more vapors are present but here less vapors are present so depending on the number of vapor molecules vapor pressure of that liquid depends so here in the case of pure solvent vapor pressure is more but in the case of solution state for the same solvent vapor pressure less okay so these less vapors produces a vapor pressure less amount that means do we say that the vapor pressure of solvent that is liquid solvent in a solution where non volatile solute is added then its vapor pressure decreases do we say like this when non volatile solute is added to the volatile liquid solvent then in solution state the vapor pressure exerted by that solvent is less compared to the pure state that decrease in vapor pressure is called lowering of vapor pressure the decrease in vapor pressure of liquid solvent when non volatile solute is added to it is called lowering of vapor pressure okay so that lowering of vapor pressure is the decrease in vapor pressure of solution i am saying here decrease in vapor pressure of the solution not pure solvent okay that also we can say so here decrease in vapor pressure of solution having non volatile solute compared to the vapor pressure of pure solvent that decrease we are calling as lowering of vapor pressure okay let us take one second here how many solute particles occupy on this surface means 1 2 3 4 5 5 5 solute particles occupied here i am assuming that two more solute particles are occupying on the surface okay let us take this one is also a solute particle this one is also a solute particle now how many solvent particles there now to reduce so that now three solvent particles so that further number of the vapor molecules decrease or increases yes decreases in the case of five five vapors are present but in the case of three three vapors only come to the oxide means into the vapor state so that vapor pressure exerted by those three vapors further decrease is it clear that means do we say that if number of solute particles are increases then the vapor pressure exerted by the solvent in the solution further decrease yes okay so that vapor pressure of solvent in a solution mainly depends on the number of solute particles okay since this vapor pressure depending on the number of solute particles in the solution we are saying that that vapor pressure is a colligative property for that liquid in the solution state okay since that vapor pressure is decreasing that long decreasing we are expressing in term of lowering of vapor pressure okay so that lowering of vapor pressure we are representing with the delta p so here delta p indicates lowering of vapor pressure that indicates lowering of vapor pressure okay so here that delta p how do we write down means p not minus ps okay that is more value minus less value vapor pressure of pure solvent is more and vapor pressure of solution is less so that overall value is positive or negative positive okay that means that how much decreasing means this much we have to subtract then what is the value is giving that value that much value decreases as 
vaporizer. Okay, so here, and what is the condition to say this one means the solute should be volatile or non-volatile? Means non-volatile solute we have to add. Then only vaporizer decrease. Instead of that, if you are adding the volatile solute, then solvent shows some vapors and solute also show vapors. If you are taking volatile solute, then vapor pressure increases further. It did not decrease. Okay, right. So, so what is lowering of vapor pressure and how do we represent that lowering of vapor pressure and what is the reason for decrease in the vapor pressure of solution compared to the pure solvent? Why it is decreasing? Okay, clear all about this to you, right. Now, let us see what is related to lowering of vapor pressure, okay. So, here if you take the ratio between lowering of vapor pressure to the vapor pressure of pure solvent, then that ratio is called relative lowering of vapor pressure. Just now we discussed lowering of vapor pressure is nothing but delta P. If you are comparing this lowering of vapor pressure with the vapor pressure of pure solvent, I am representing the vapor pressure of pure solvent as P naught. If we compare this lowering of vapor pressure of a solution with respect to the vapor pressure of pure solvent, that relation we are calling as relative lowering of vapor pressure. Okay? So, here since it is a ratio between the lowering of vapor pressure to the vapor pressure of pure solvent, then we can define the relative lowering of vapor pressure as the ratio means by between lowering of vapor pressure delta P for whose that one lowering of vapor pressure solution. So, that lowering of vapor pressure of solution to the vapor pressure of pure solvent P naught. Okay? So, that lowering of vapor pressure of solution is delta P and vapor pressure of pure solvent P naught. That ratio we are calling as relative lowering of vapor pressure. And since we are writing that delta P as P naught minus P S, then P naught minus P S by P naught gives relative lowering of vapor pressure. Okay? So, that we can write down RLVP as P naught minus P S by P naught, where R means relative, L means lowering and V means vapor, P means pressure. Okay? So, this is equation to represent the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Okay. According to Raoul's law, for dilute solution which has non-volatile solute, for a dilute solution which has non-volatile solute, the relative lowering of vapor pressure that is P naught minus P S by P naught is equal to mole fraction of solute. That is equal to mol fraction of solute. This law is applicable only for dilute solution. What is dilute solution means? The quantity of the solute is very less in that solution compared to the solvent quantity. Okay? So, for dilute solutions where solute does not undergo any association or any dissociation, then in that case, the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of solute. That was observed by Raoult scientist. That's why according to Raoult's law, P naught minus P S by P naught is equal to X solute. Okay? Now, if we take according to the definition of mole fraction, okay? So, mole fraction is nothing but number of moles of that substance by total number of moles of all the components present in that solution. Okay? Since we are expressing mole fraction with respect to the solute, then X solute is equal to N solute by N solute plus N solvent. That means number of moles of solute by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent because solution contain only solute and solvent. So, total number of moles. 
okay so here since it is a dilute solution the number of moles of solute is very 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 less than number of moles of solvent since it is a dilute solution okay amount of the solute is very very less so that number of moles also decreases okay that value is negligible compared to the number of moles of solvent okay so that we can take n solute plus n solvent collectively together as n solvent okay since it is a dilute solution number of moles of solute particles are very less then we can take this denominator summation as number of moles of solvent okay so that this summation i am taking as number of moles of solvent only so that we can rearrange this as x solute is equal to n solute that is number of moles of solute by number of moles of solvent okay so according to the formula of number of moles number of moles is nothing but weight by molecular weight and here also weight by molecular weight i am taking the weight of solute as a and molecular weight as ma weight of the solute as wb and the molecular weight of the sorry I'm taking this weight of this solute as WA, molecular weight of solute as MA, weight of the solvent as WB, and molecular weight of the solvent as MB. So if we rearrange this one, then we can get this. Okay. So if we rearrange that, then X solute is equal to WA by MA into MB by WB. so that we can write so this equation we can rearrange like this okay so here what is wa means weight of the solute wa weight of solute and ma molecular weight of solute okay mb molecular weight of solvent and wb weight of solvent nothing but a means solute b means solvent w means weight m means molecular weight okay since we are going to add some amount of the solute and some amount of the solvent to prepare a solution we know that m m w a and w b values okay since we know the solvent we can know the molecular weight of that solvent okay if we don't know the molecular weight of this solute by using this equation we can calculate the molecular weight of that solute after knowing the relative lowering of vapor pressure of that solution that relative lowering of vapor pressure we have to know by experimental that is by ex doing some experiment we can know this rlvp okay and by using this equation we can calculate the molar mass of solute that is the major advantage of colligative property okay so here this relative lowering of vapor pressure p not minus ps by p not is a colligative property that one is inversely proportional to the molar mass of solute do we say like that okay so here the relative lowering of vapor pressure which is a colligative property is inversely proportional to molar mass so by using this equation we can calculate molar mass of the solute okay and what is p not what is ps means p not is nothing but vapor pressure of the pure solvent and ps is vapor pressure of solution okay so by substituting these values we can calculate the molar mass of solute okay so this is about relative lowering of vapor pressure and what is raoult's law according to raoult's law which one is equal to which one okay and what is the final equation do we get in the relative lowering of vapor pressure to calculate the molar mass of solute 
ok right. So, what is colligative property means it is the ratio between the lowering of vapor pressure of the solution to the vapor pressure of pure solvent ok and what is lowering of vapor pressure means when a non volatile solute is added to the volatile solvent then vapor pressure of that pure solvent decreases in that solution that decrease in the vapor pressure of a solution compared to the pure solvent is called lowering of vapor pressure. Thank you for watching this video ok. So, in this session we discussed about what are colligative properties and how we measure the colligative properties of those and what is the relation of those colligative properties to the Wanda factor and molar mass of the solute. Like at this video ok. So, if you like this video please share, subscribe and share to your friends so that I will try to upload more videos ok and in next video let us see with another concept ok. See all of you in next video.